Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Integrated Lighting Campaign's Recognition Opportunities for Supporters webinar. I'd like to thank the many of you that have already joined as supporters of the ILC and are here to learn and to help uh, learn how to get the most out of the ILC. Uh, for those of you that are on that haven't joined, maybe you haven't heard of the ILC, I hope this presentation will help answer any questions you may have in order to uh, join the campaign uh, and also to provide support for the campaign. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Next slide, please. I'm Felipe Leon of Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, uh, and I will be your presenter today. Um, I am the ILC team lead and represent a dedicated team of professionals working together to help make the first year of the campaign a success. Sergey Gorbachev, uh, project coordinator at PNNL, is also joining me and monitoring comments and questions related to the campaign that may come in during the presentation portion of this webinar. Uh, we, we intentionally left a significant amount of time uh, at the end of this webinar to answer questions and have opportunities for interaction. Uh, so please get those questions coming in as, as we go along. During the Q&A session, we will enable the ability to unmute yourself and hopefully we can have an interactive discussion at that time. Should you have any technical difficulties, uh, Nina Swanson, a sustainability program specialist at Retech Advisors will be available to help via chat. So please uh, use up the chat windows if you're having any problems with, with the webinar. Uh, so thank you to both Serge and Nina for your support on this webinar. Uh, last but not least, uh, some of our ILC organizers are in attendance and have agreed to provide a few words. Um, I will introduce each of them in a moment. Next slide, please. So first, we have some announcements for you. Uh, DOE's annual lighting R&D workshop will be held February 1st through the 4th. Uh, this year, the event is free and virtual. Just sign of the times. Uh, we'll have opportunities to learn, network, and contribute input to DOE, DOE's lighting and R&D priorities. Uh, the theme is meeting the moment, uh, and what a moment it is. Uh, advanced lighting technology can improve the safety and well-being of people in buildings, from senior care to classroom to offices. And as we transition after the pandemic, uh, how can lighting also contribute to more flexible and adaptable building layouts uh, and occupancy levels? How is solid state lighting R&D continuing to push the envelope on lighting performance and manufacturing? Uh, these are just some of the things that you'll hear at this uh, workshop. And again, free and virtual uh, this year. So it's a great opportunity to join that. Uh, Another event, uh, the ILC is gonna host a webinar on February 11th, focused on opportunities for participants. I'll go a little bit about the difference between participants and supporters here in a moment, uh, but that includes recognition, resources, and access to technical assistance from the campaign for those that are building owners and facility managers. We encourage you to pass along information to building owners and facility managers that may be interested in learning more about the ILC and, and also in submitting their projects for recognition. Lastly, uh, the US Department of Energy sponsored IOT uh, Inter or Internet of Things Upgradable Lighting Challenge uh, is inviting end users and manufacturers to be recognized for their participation and creative input regarding the widespread adoption of IoT upgradable luminaires. Uh, a kickoff web webinar will be held soon. Uh, please be sure to visit our campaign's website, uh, which I'll have throughout our presentation here and you see at the bottom of your screen, uh, to view these and other upcoming events and to get the dates and links when, when they become available. Next slide, please. Better buildings technology campaigns are collaborative platforms designed to help speed the adoption of promising energy saving technologies. And we do this through providing resources helpful to decision makers, uh, technical assistance, uh, as well as recognition for exemplary projects that are leading the way. In 2019, for example, participants of several campaigns reported energy savings totaling more than $250 million, resulting from the adoption of energy saving technologies. Currently, there are two active campaigns. The Building Envelope Campaign is a sister, sister campaign to the ILC. Uh, you can learn more about it at the website listed on the slide here uh, or by emailing envelope campaign at ornl.gov. The integrated lighting campaign is the topic of today's presentation. I will cover it in detail. Uh, for both campaigns, uh, the model is the same, participants and supporters. So what you learn here today will, will be very similar. Uh, and also the building envelope campaign is starting to accept entries for recognition also. So that's another opportunity to, to take all your building upgrades and, and, and uh, submit them for recognition. Next slide, please. Our campaign's organizers are our primary planning and management team partners. They are better, uh, they are all better, I'm sorry. Uh, they are, they are uh, Better Buildings, uh, which is an initiative of the US Department of Energy, the Zidelines Consortium, United States General Services Administration, Illuminating Engineering Society, 
International Facility Management Association, Lighting Controls Association, and International Association of Lighting Management Companies. Organizers to the campaign help provide guidance and support our outreach reach efforts and have an alignment with and an interest in our campaign and what we're doing. We are happy to have their support and some were able to join us today to introduce their organization and the value that the ILC brings to their organizations, their members, and to others. Next slide, please. So first I'd like to introduce Blake Dressel, uh, United States Department of Energy Commercial Buildings Integration Fellow to provide the DOE and Better Buildings perspective regarding the ILC. Blake? Great, thank you, Felipe. Um, uh, Nina, if you could go to the next slide, please. So I'll give an overview quickly of um, where the technology campaigns sit within our Better Buildings Initiative. Uh, the Better Buildings Initiative um, is a part of the U.S. Department of Energy and designed to uh, improve the market adoption of energy efficiency technologies, um, driving leadership uh, in energy innovation. Um, through Better Buildings, DOE partners work with leaders in the public and private sectors uh, to make the nation's homes, commercial buildings, um, as well as industrial plants more efficient. Uh, by accelerating uh, investment and sharing best practices. And so uh, we have um, a few uh, campaigns that, that work under this Better Buildings Initiative, the Integrated Lighting Campaign, the Smart Energy Analytics Campaign, as well as the RT, uh, RTU uh, Campaign. Excuse me. Um, and so, you know, what, what are we focusing on here? Um, there's a, there's a big opportunity that um, that we have um, in front of us, and if DOE, if the U.S. Department of Energy targets efficiency and connected lighting are met, LEDs will enable an additional cumulative 16 quads of energy savings through 2035. Um, yet today, uh, less than one percent of lighting systems are connected. This is why the integrated lighting campaign is important. Uh, led by the Pacific Northwest National Lab and the supporters on this call, uh, we can reach our goal of moving that 1% to 30% of lighting being connected by 2035. Um, and so thank you all for attending um, and, and participating and um, I, will, I will pass it on. Thank you. Great, thank you, Blake. All right. Okay. Thank hey. you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Doreen Manichia. Uh, Doreen is Director of Market Strategy and Development with the Design Lights Consortium, and will provide an overview of the DLC and how its efforts align with the ILC. Doreen? Hi, everyone. Thank you, Felipe. Uh, it's nice to be here and welcome everybody, and good morning and good afternoon, I guess, depending on where you, where you live. Um, Thank you for attending today, and I'd like to just spend a few minutes uh, describing the DLC to you and then speaking for a few minutes about our uh, the importance of the integrated lighting campaign and and how we can all work together to um, add value to, to this area. The, the Design Lights Consortium, in other words, DLC, is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to achieve energy optimization by enabling controllability with a focus on quality, people, and the environment. And the way we do that is by developing uh, what we call QPLs or qualified product lists. And through those, we promote high quality, energy efficient lighting products in collaboration with utilities and energy efficiency program members, manufacturers, lighting specifiers, and also federal, state, and local entities. So through these partnerships, collaborations, and whatnot, we facilitate thought leadership to develop high quality product and system specifications, which then become qualified product lists. We currently have three QPLs that include uh, solid state lighting luminaires, network lighting controls, and horticulture luminaires. Each of these has, has specific targeted emphasis in these specific areas for lead luminaires, network lighting controls, as well as horticulture. So with over 600,000 products currently represented on our collective lists, um, the QPLs are the largest lists of commercial SSL lighting and control systems in the world. 
Our products and systems on the list go through a rigorous evaluation and verification process to ensure that all products are in compliance with the performance specifications that um, are used for the list. Many utility energy efficiency programs require DLC listed products in order to be eligible for incentives because this saves them time, money, and resources. <clears throat> Excuse me. The QPLs are also valuable product selection tools for any type of project, whether it's for office buildings, healthcare, uh, schools, retail, or hospitality. Next slide, please. The DOE's integrated lighting campaign is well aligned with the DLC's core mission and values. Uh, we're supporting the, we support the ILC and the activities, and we expect that the initiative will help to drive the adoption of connected lighting in buildings and in cities. Our common goals include driving connected lighting adoption and documenting success to provide both energy and non-energy benefits. The campaign seeking to document projects and case studies, which will help to showcase performance and to also so show successes and also weaknesses. So it's important that we all try to come together and share what we have and what we've learned so that we can further uh, the adoption of connected lighting technologies and also the, the ability to inter interoperate or integrate with other systems in a building. The Design Lights Consortium has many resources and tools uh, that are available and can be referenced um, for our products, as well as the integrated lighting campaign is building um, a whole platform with a lot of great resources for everyone. So I encourage you to please spend some time on the ILC website. And also from there, you can link to the DLC website if you want to go deeper into our resources and tools. So thank you, Felipe and, and everyone. And uh, we look forward to, to building case studies and knowledge together with you. Thank you. Great, thank you, Doreen. Next slide, please. There we go. Uh, Bill Conley is an international is an international facility management association fellow, and will now provide us with an overview of IFMA and how its efforts align with the ILC. Bill, all yours. Thank you, Felipe, and happy new year, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I've had the privilege of report of representing IFMA to the ILC since the onset of the ILC came in, and we're also a member of the Better Building Alliance. Um, IFMA is the world's largest and most widely recognized international association for facility managers. Um, we offer a membership, which is a strong networking system amongst our people, um, professional advancement uh, credentials. We have a um, SFP credential, the Sustainability Facility Professional. We put on events and conferences where we have trade shows aligned with education, where um, providers of uh, lighting and, and controls um, showcase their, their stuff and, and advise us on, on what we can do to better our um, energy savings. Um, and we also have a knowledge library. It's a repository of FAM information, including articles and presentations and white papers on lighting, uh, some which have been spurred by the ILC um, efforts. Next slide, please. So IFMA's impact on the built environment, there are more than 78 billion square feet of property run by facility managers, um, and we spend over $526 billion. Uh, we, do, we strongly subscribe to the triple bottom line, uh, energy efficiency, cost savings, and indoor environmental quality, and lighting, of course, contributes to all three of those. Um, think of the impact over 23,000 FMs can have on energy conservation. Uh, according to the EPA, in the United States, over 71% of overall lighting electricity is used in commercial buildings. Uh, 35 to 50% of total energy consumed in a commercial building is due to lighting. And they say that some commercial spaces waste up to 90% of lighting energy. It's an unnecessary expense that through over-illumination and the, um, the use of the wrong lamp types. Uh, and thank goodness for LEDs, <laughs> by the way. Um, and we really rely on the ILC and its supporters to help us reach our goals to, to um, go to the next level, to get integrated controls, stuff like that, to, to better serve our employees, better serve our companies, save money, and, and improve quality of life uh, in the indoor environment. So, and that's it, Felipe. Hope short and sweet. Great. Thank you so much, Bill. All right. Next slide. Perfect. Uh, Gary Meshberg is Vice Chairman of Lighting Controls Association and will now share with us uh, a little bit about the LCA and uh, the alignment with the LCA efforts. Gary, all yours. 
Great. Hi, everybody. And thanks, Felipe. Uh, so, yeah, so what I'd like to show is just a little bit about our association, and it's really a portal for information. We talk about, uh, Blake mentioned, 1% of systems are actually connected, and, and Bill mentioned something similar. So uh, I just want to show you where more information can be found, and, and really the LCA is just a resource for you. Uh, LCA is a council of NEMA, the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, and we're dedicated to educating the professional building design, construction, and management communities about lighting control technology, application, and its benefits. We try to keep up with current trends. We've been doing this for about 20 years. We have a great blog and uh, a lot of resources that I'll show you in just a second here. Uh, our membership includes noted leaders in the manufacture of advanced lighting controls as well as LED drivers. Next slide, please. So LCA provides information. It really covers the gambit. Since we've been doing this for 20 years, certainly pre-LED and a lot of the IoT and type technologies. So when we talk about ILC from an integrated standpoint, LCA covers the, the gambit from standalone lighting controls, so code compliant controls, all the way up to fully networked and integrated systems, some, some of what you're seeing here on screen. Uh, the content serves to educate on most aspects of lighting control and its impact on health, safety, comfort, welfare, how it, it, it relates to COVID. So things like COVID or disinfection, uh, the newer IoT type technologies are trends that we try to keep up with, and you'll find that. Uh, content, uh, circadian uh, rhythms and human health benefits and so on uh, from a resource standpoint on our site. Networked or advanced lighting controls uh, talk about a higher level of control providing data analytics and really that integration between other subsystems such as HVAC, having an occupancy sensor from lighting, help set back temperature set points when a space is unoccupied is, is a typical example of some of these integration uh, strategies that can take place. And really just the efficiencies where one system can really leverage the hardware from another system and, and get efficiencies, greater efficiencies in use cases just beyond lighting. Next slide, please. We're proud to offer Education Express. Uh, there's a lot of resources. Uh, really what this is, it's a robust series of courses covering all aspects of lighting control, including technology, application, design, as well as commissioning. Uh, the courses online, there's over 50 hours of learning and education credit. These are accredited courses with AIA for uh, continuing education sessions, uh, learning units, as well as NCQLP and NELMCO. The courses are downloadable as PDF files, so you can do it online or offline. We will print you a certificate. Uh, the best part about this is, well, not besides the education, is it's all free. So this is another resource for to be able to get accredited uh, credits for certain degrees that you might need to uh, continue your education on. And uh, again, it's content rich. So uh, that's my time. I just ask you to think about the Lighting Controls Association as you're looking for information and content for designs or applications. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Gary. All right, next slide. All right, uh, last, last but not least, um, NAMCO is the International Association of Lighting Management Companies. Although NAMCO was unable to join us on this webinar today, uh, its representative on our organizing committee provided this slide to express their support for the ILC as well as a few talking points. So I'll go over those now. Uh, NAMCO supports the ILC's efforts and goals to save energy. Since joining the interior lighting campaign, the precursor to this campaign, uh, in December of 2018, NAMCO has actively promoted the campaign to supporters and participants. 2019 saw NAMCO member projects recognized for their contributions with Target and Walgreens. NAMCO continues to help inform others about advanced lighting through case studies, recognizing exemplary projects, and working with customers ranging from small local businesses to large national accounts to big and small government projects. NAMCO looks forward to contributing to the success and energy savings goal of the integrated lighting campaign. So next slide, please. So thank you to our organizers that were able to join us today. I really hope that getting it directly from them gives everybody that's on this webinar a sense for the alignment that we have. Many of the resources that they have developed are linked on our campaign and we 
we really appreciate that they are allowing us to share some of their educational, some of their uh, utility incentive lists uh, through our campaign to, to make it easier for those that come to the campaign wanting to learn about integrated lighting to get it all in one stop, right? Uh, they can get uh, education, they can get incentives and, and other materials, reports and case studies. So with an understanding of how the campaign works, as I described earlier, I will now cover the focus area of the integrated lighting campaign. Uh, for starters, there are still advances in luminaires and lighting systems that we are hoping to capture in the ILC. Advanced sensor and controls in lighting and advanced lighting systems that improve lighting performance are of interest, and we would love hearing how those systems are going above and beyond simple occupancy, daylighting, and scheduling approaches. We covered a lot of that in the uh, interior lighting campaign, the precursor to this campaign. Uh, going beyond the lighting system now, thinking about, well, this lighting system can connect to other systems. Uh, you know, when you communicate with other building systems, that will afford deeper whole building energy savings, for example, by exchanging information with heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems, and controllable plug loads. Although the energy benefits of such integrations can result in a return on investment, non-energy benefits may tap into a higher value proposition that may tip the scale in favor of adoption of these systems. Some examples of these include doing space utilization analysis, leveraging the occupancy sensors. That's a very simple solution once you're, you're, you're connected to a, a building automation system, for example. For systems with communication beacons, asset tracking may help improve business workflows. And today we're hearing a lot about contact tracing, right? Because of COVID, in some cases using the lighting infrastructure that's, that's being done. And lastly, what is just over the horizon um, as we start uh, to see luminaires as a platform for IoT devices, what other capabilities will become available and provide value to a building owner? So through the ILC, we hope to capture some of these innovative lighting projects, recognize the exemplary projects out there, and help document those successes so that others may, may make informed decisions about advanced lighting systems and the capabilities that they can uh, enable in their buildings. Next slide, please. So here are a few examples from actual field validation uh, validations that have been conducted by Pacific Northwest National Lab that are well aligned with the types of projects that the ILC hopes to capture. The first project included office and high base spaces in the Department of Defense site utilizing integral occupancy sensors. These sensors were able to communicate the occupancy data to the HVAC system and set back the temperature of the space when it was vacant. Furthermore, in the office space, the occupancy sensor was also able to inform the controllable plug loads to turn off when vacant. The other three examples worked in much the same way, and this table provides an overview of the lighting-related H, the lighting-related HVAC-related and plug load-related energy savings. As is typical, you can see that lighting energy savings when replacing legacy products with high-efficiency LED luminaires was significant. In this case, ranging from 57% to 76%. Plug load and HVAC savings as a result of integrating the lighting system is also significant, although in some cases the cost may not be justifiable. In-depth reports for these projects will be available in the coming months, and we will share the link on the ILC website and through our newsletter. Next slide, please. Felipe, we have a question here. Sure. Sir, yeah, does, uh -huh. does, uh, does ILC provide research and case studies regarding energy savings and occupant comfort? Right. Um, if I could, let me get through the presentation. That's that's a great question. Uh, and we will have a Q&A session at the end, Sergey. Okay, awesome. Appreciate it. I, I will cover a little bit of that uh, here, maybe as we go along the slide, and then I will come back to that question. Next slide, please. All right, here we are. Uh, a little bit of nomenclature is captured here for clarity. Uh, you've already heard about organizers and their role in the ILC. Supporters are organizations that deliver some value to a building owner or end user, whether it be products, services, electricity, and electricity incentives. Um, and these could include energy efficiency organizations, manufacturers, utilities, and more. Participants of the ILC, on the other hand, are adopters of the technology and could include building owners, facility managers, or anyone overseeing the use of technology in a building or buildings. As supporters of the ILC, you play a key role in our success by helping to promote the ILC and to help identify those projects that may be a good fit for the ILC and to receive recognition. Next slide, please. 
on this slide are several of our campaign supporters and participants. Some of you on the supporter side, maybe organizations, some, some of these on the on the supporter side, maybe organizations you do business with, uh, or possibly even consider a competitor of your business. On the participant side, you may see organizations that have purchased your products or services, have taken part in research efforts you conducted, or received incentives from you for having adopted energy saving technologies. The full list of supporters and participants is available on our website, and we look forward to adding some of you on this, on this webinar to that list. Next slide, please. So let's let's go to a poll question here. Uh, let's take a moment to get to get a better understanding of those that are on this webinar. Um, so I'm going to ask that, looking at this list, you select which of the options best describes you and the organ or the organization you represent. So please take a moment to go ahead and select one of these uh, to give us a better sense for who's on on the call today. All right, the results are showing on the screen, so let's review those. Uh, we've got a pretty good mix here. I like that we've got uh, some consultant designers and engineers in ESCOs. Um, you are very close to some of these projects, so hopefully you're you're kind of getting the sense here, hey, I've done some of these projects, uh, but we'll, we'll find out a little bit later. There's another poll question to kind of get a sense for how much of you, how much, how many of you have worked on some of these. Uh, distributor manufacturers, great. Uh, you provide the products and 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 services here uh, that that make these uh, things possible. Uh, energy efficiency organizations, many of you are working on projects that that are adopting these technologies and testing them and writing research reports so thank you for your support in that front uh, and there are utility and there are others that that could include anybody that didn't categorize maybe uh, uh, researchers uh, and others so and, and utilities great to have you on uh, the incentives you provide really make these uh, uh, cost effective uh, to implement uh, and, and they have been a big part in, in the interior lighting campaign, there certainly were, and I think it, they will also be going forward for integrated systems. So thank you. Uh, thank you for answering the poll. Let's uh, go to the next slide, please. Great. All right, I've mentioned some of the things that you as a supporter can do to help the campaign, and you can see those here. Uh, also in the past, supporters have gone beyond promoting the ILC and actively engaging with participants. Uh, by actively engaging with participants to help them submit their projects for recognition. Uh, we can help that too. Uh, as I said, we've got a team of professionals here at, at, at our lab that we can uh, help those participants to submit their projects, if you prefer. Uh, and that's part of the technical system we, we provide to participants. But there's always that other side of it, right? I, I think you know it's great that we're asking for your support here, but what's in it for me, right? Uh, when it comes to supporters. Uh, we do provide an opportunity for visibility of your orga organization through our website, uh, newsletters, and mentions and case studies that are developed for recognized participant projects. Uh, given the aim of the campaign to increase adoption of energy saving systems, for you, that might mean increased sales. It could mean reduced energy use. It could mean uh, some other value added outcome for your organization as we help to increase the adoption of these systems. We also do provide recognition for some supporter types for their efforts to help the adoption of technology of interest to the ILC uh, or helping the ILC's efforts. Uh, lastly, a supporter logo is available for our registered supporters to demonstrate your support for the ILC and promote the ILC, for example, by linking it to our website. Uh, so these are just some of the things that would be in it for you, uh, and hopefully you see that as a value. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the ILC website. Uh, the ILC website serves as a resource for your clients or members to obtain relevant information. Reports and case studies from national research, uh, national research labs uh, and other third party organizations are linked here as, as well as uh, utility incentive lists that may help provide financial support for those undertaking advanced lighting projects. Uh, webinars and training resources are, are also available and listed. Uh, along with topic relevant videos uh, that are available to view right on the site. So you can uh, learn a little bit about uh, integrated systems and, and their benefits. Uh, and there is a way to filter these so you can get right to what you're looking for. So please share that uh, and, and ask others to uh, 
get information at that site and, and become involved with the campaign. Next slide, please. I'm gonna cover, even though this, this webinar is about supporters and, and your recognition, I do want you to understand what the opportunities are for participants, uh, because this is, again, an opportunity to indirectly let people know about your products, your services, and the things that you do uh, for participants uh, when we develop case studies. So advanced use of sensors and controls. Again, we are looking at uh, this category, looking at connected lighting systems, network lighting controls, advanced lighting controls. They're all encapsulated here, but that's not exclusive, right? We're looking for other possibilities that, for example, create an enhanced user or occupant experience. I've also mentioned the HVAC and plug load benefits, uh, and we have distinct recognition categories for each of those. But then when it comes to other integrated systems and lighting, the sky or maybe the ceiling's the limit here. Uh, some examples of projects that may be submitted in the category include lighting systems that interact with grid services, uh, energy storage systems, photovoltaics, uh, automated shades, asset tracking, security, and more. Uh, provide the lighting system plays a role in creating that value add, either through its sensors or other devices that are incorporated in, into that system. Uh, such as IoT sensors and beacons, we want to hear about it. We want to capture that in the campaign to start helping to quantify some of the value of those systems. Next slide, please. Without further ado, uh, we do have recognition opportunities for supporters. Uh, for example, utility programs that may be providing incentives. Uh, utilities may also submit information to help the ILC, uh, such as aggregate data related to number of projects you've incentivized, uh, the calculated measured energy savings at the either the building or the, or the program level. I mean, we're looking for aggregate data also. Uh, and any other information that would support quantifying of energy benefits, and, and if you have it, other benefits, but we know that's a little bit harder to come by. Uh, supporters such as utilities, ESCOs, and energy efficiency organizations may also submit for recognition for their direct impact on the success of the ILC. Uh, some examples include helping to recruit participants into the ILC encouraging submission of projects for recognition, uh, as well as helping participants to submit projects for recognition. Next slide, please. So the process to submit for recognition is streamlined uh, for both participants and supporters. Um, what you'll see for a participant submission is very similar to what I'm showing here, which is for supporters. Um, on this forum, you'll see that uh, the first section here covers a narrative describing the program or incentives being submitted for consideration um, or a summary of how your outreach efforts have helped the ILC recruit participants and receive project entries. The second section of the form simply asks for some supporting data, such as those number of buildings impacted, energy savings measured, incentives given, uh, participants' projects recruited, or any other quantifiable information that supports the narrative. So again, very, very streamlined process, very simple to submit for recognition. Uh, and you know, it's, it's uh, available to do it right on the website for you. Uh, we'll add some other uh, identifiable information just to make sure that we have your contact and, and we know who submitted, but that's, that's about it. Next slide, please. So I, I do wanna emphasize our window for recognition is closing in fast. Uh, two months, you know, will fly. Uh, so please think about all the great projects you know of and consider reaching out to encourage potential participants to join and submit their projects. Of course, consider joining and submitting for recognition as a supporter. Uh, March 15th is the deadline and the ILC will, uh, will complete the selection process for exemplary projects and supporters by the end of June. The 2021 recognition event will be held during the Illuminating Engineering Society's annual conference, one of our organizers, uh, which is scheduled for August 5th through the 7th this year. But what happens beyond that is where the campaign seeks to add value by creating a body of knowledge from the recognized projects. Some basic information about each project and its benefits is shared during the recognition ceremony. However, more in-depth case studies are planned for development in order to deliver more information to those considering similar products and systems. Newsletter articles are also a way that we can communicate about these projects throughout the year. So those are some of the things that you see there in creating that body of knowledge. Next slide, please. All right, so we'll take a moment here uh, before we move on to just having heard all about what the LLC does and what it's looking for, I'd like to ask whether you are aware of any participant projects aligned with any of the recognition categories that may be eligible for recognition by the ILC. 
Uh, so which of the, these options best describes how you feel about your awareness or your organization's awareness of these types of projects? So uh, please go ahead and answer this uh, poll and we'll come back to it. All right, let's take a look at the results. Um, all right, so some of many of you have supported an installation of these kind of systems, uh, either where you have that connection with HVAC, plug loads. Uh, some of you are actually have these technologies in your building, so that's great. Um, we know we can get you the info. I like that. I like that. Uh, we we can reach out to you and and uh, see uh, if you can provide some information here. Um, and we are not aware of any such systems, gasp. Um, so, and, and here's why the gasp. Uh, we, we are aware that, you know, we are at that 1% adoption of, of some of these systems. So some of you that are on this call may not yet have these on here, um, but there are, they are coming, right? They are creating that energy benefit. It's getting easier to integrate these systems. Uh, there's, there's a, an opportunity to go beyond that and provide more value. So I think we'll see a lot of that. Um, so those of you that have not yet uh, been aware of any such systems uh, through your organization or your own efforts, uh, hang in there, uh, come to the campaign and, and learn about some of these systems because they really do add value to buildings. So hopefully you'll learn a little bit about that uh, and that you know, not, uh, lack of awareness will become awareness and hopefully adoption. So, so please uh, take a moment to visit the campaign and see what others are doing uh, to see the benefits there. Next slide, please. Great, so we have reached the Q&A and interactive portion of the webinar. And before I open it up, uh, the ability to uh, unmute your microphones, uh, Sergi did note that there were some questions that had come in. Um, so, Let's let's go over those, and then we'll go ahead and open the microphone. Sergi, uh, could you queue up those questions? Sure do. Uh, so the first one, I do believe we covered, but just in case, uh, does the IOC provide research and case studies regarding energy savings and occupant comfort? Great question. Uh, so those those are uh, energy savings are are going to be very aligned with that HVAC and plug load. So I think what we will be providing going forward, uh, I showed an example of some of the um, uh, validation projects that have been done by PNNL, and those will become reports that are going to be uh, linked to and, and, and available through our website. So that is something that, again, the, the, the body of knowledge is, is growing. Uh, we have some links that will help get to that level of energy savings and, and the occupant comfort. So we do have some content on the website. And th that will be on our resources page. So go to our resources page and see that. Uh, there And there are there is research going on by Lawrence Berkeley National Lab that, that, that is available, for example, for, uh, uh, for systems that integrate automated shades uh, that can lead to occupant comfort. Uh, and those are the type of reports that might be helpful in, on, on that front, that, that uh, occupant comfort. That's what Sergi. This is yeah, Gary. Lighting hey, Controls Association has some of those types of research papers, white papers, case studies as well. Great. That's another resource. Awesome. All right. Great. So ILC website. Uh, we have links directly to all of our organizers uh, on the organizer section, um, and you can go to the Light Control Association and check that out. Thank you, Gary. Has the uh, Sergi? Yeah, so we have another one here that says, has the IOC provided utilities with energy conservation measures, such as ECM validation, including energy savings assumptions to develop or rebate incentive programs? That That is a great question. We are not there yet, uh, the Integrated Lighting Campaign. This is our first year, um, but I, I can't say that there are some things that I've seen from Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. They have a project called Beyond Widgets. Uh, if you go into our campaign on the utility and incentives, uh, you'll notice that they have put together some, I think they call them packages or, or something like that, that 
uh, utilities can use as a way to understand how to develop incentives around uh, some of these systems. So I certainly encourage you to check out the website. There is some content there from uh, LBNL. Uh, and if you have a question, I'll, I'll provide my contact information. I'll be happy to make a connection there. Okay. Then we have, does every project that is submitted get recognized? And what exactly does recognition mean for the end use customer beyond submitting project, the project? Okay. Great question. Does every project uh, submitted get recognized? Um, I, 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 I'd like to say that yes, we we would recognize every single project, but we we do we are looking for those exemplary projects. Uh, so I, I I believe that you know providing us a very good you know narrative, uh, giving us some good information about the energy benefits. Uh, that, that, that will really put you in a good position to get recognition. I think if we can if we can say that there is something to learn here from what that project has done, if we can make that claim, I think there's a very good opportunity for recognition. But the idea is not, not to recognize everything. We're trying to uh, provide recognition for those exemplary projects that are really gonna drive value to those that are wanting to learn about these projects. Is it possible that, that every project gets recognized? Uh, sure. I, I'd love to see all of these great projects come in. Uh, these these are uh, this is going to drive value to the campaign. And there is a follow-up here. It says, do they mm -hmm. need to attend an event? And what information about them is shared publicly? Also, how, how about for supporters? Great. So we do have the recognition event. It's a nice way to publicly recognize those organizations that have uh, done uh, taken on these these projects and done an exemplary job of it. Uh, they're, they're, they're at their option, they may attend the event. We will still provide the recognition for it and, and announce it at their uh, at the event, but there, there is no need to attend the event if you are unable. Uh, you would still receive the recognition. Now, regarding what information is shared publicly, um, we of course recognize you in a public forum, so we would say what the organization is. Uh, what recognition you are receiving. Uh, so that's information that we would share. Uh, and then we, we are, of course, again, looking for the, the justification for that recognition, right? So we are asking for some low level information for that recognition. Uh, how much energy did you observe was saved? Um, things like that would be shared uh, as, as part of this recognition. Uh, and then we would want to develop a case study where we share a little bit more, but we would always work with that participant to, to understand what can be shared, what can't be shared, and make sure that we are uh, not sharing anything that we should not. Um, and, and with respect to supporters, um, you know, we are recognizing your efforts. Uh, we understand that there are sensitivities about, about providing any customer data uh, where you provide any aggregate savings, for example, energy savings or information about systems that you've sold in the market or, or percentages. Um, th those are things we're hoping that we can share just to give an idea of the adoption. But again, we would work with you to make sure that we are uh, sharing the right information. All right, thank you for that question. Next question, Sergi. Can manufacturers be recognized? If yes, what criteria are you looking for? Great question. Um, so because we are working because of because this is a department of energy program recognition for manufacturers is is extremely challenging uh, we, we are hoping that manufacturers will see the value in the campaign in getting those products and 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 those uh, projects that they have supported recognized so we hope that that indirect energy benefit uh indirect benefit will, will be enough uh but it is just the the um Unfortunately, we are not able to recognize manufacturers directly um, as, as, as part of the campaign. Okay. And maybe I'll take one more question, Sergi. I do want to open up the microphones and just have a more interactive discussion here. All right, last one, I promise. I might know of a project. Can I submit the project on behalf of a customer? That's a good one. Um, absolutely. Uh, we, you are our supporters. Uh, helping us get the word out is, is one way. Um, many, many supporters in the past, uh, on the previous campaign, they, they felt so strongly about what we were doing. They felt so strongly about the, the projects that they have supported that, that they wanted it to come to light, right? So, so we, they did that through the campaign and, and they were very active in helping to, one, they might know the information that, uh, regarding the project 
the lumen at that point you know the number of luminaires that they replaced the wattage and all that uh, so they were very willing and, and and very able to help them uh, submit for recognition so absolutely welcome of course uh we do you do have to get their buy-in they 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 will be the, the participant will be the one receiving the recognition uh so so absolutely we will still need a contact person for the for the participant as well as their buy-in that, that they know they're they're being submitted for this recognition but absolutely uh, the participant is able to take as as much of a hands-on or a hands-off approach uh, working with the supporter to to submit their projects thank you sergi all right so having answered the questions and knowing that there might be some of you on the call that one may want to just ask a question in uh, uh using your microphone uh, or maybe engage some of those that are uh, on the webinar into just a dynamic conversation I i'd like to ask nina to uh, please help us with uh, unmuting every, uh, allowing everyone to unmute themselves on the webinar uh, as a reminder, please unmute when you would like to pose a question, suggestion, or comment, and help us keep background noise levels at a minimum by keeping yourself muted otherwise. So, Nina, are we able to do that now? Yep, I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody right now. Great. So everyone should be able to unmute themselves um, when they're ready to talk. Great. So at this point, I'd like to open it up to any of our organizers that are still on the call uh, on the webinar to, to please chime in with any additional uh, either answers to some of the questions that we had, maybe some of the resources that you have available, as well as uh, any, any questions that you might still have from, from the webinar participants. Oh, Felipe, this is Bill again, uh, representing Hi. IFMA. Um, you know, we're we're part of the organizers because of everything we can learn from this. You know, we can't contribute as much except for you know knowledge from our users, but we definitely benefit from the ILC, and that's why we've been involved with them for for such a long time. Because uh, you know, everything we learn through the ILC goes to our FMs and and uh, helps them create more energy efficient projects so which again is why we need the supporters because we we need the input from the subject matter experts out there um so i just wanted to, I, I sort of mentioned that before but i wanted to make that clear yep thank you bill we, we do appreciate the support and we know that facility managers you know they they are working with these systems day in and day out um, and, and hope that they're they're willing to share some of their experiences and and the benefits that they've encountered so I'm looking forward to seeing some of some of your membership uh, learn about the campaign and say, hey, I, I want to let the world know what what how how I enjoy working with this graphical user interface and and being able to control lighting, being able to to adjust my HVAC settings. Um, so thank you, Bill. Any other thoughts or questions, comments, suggestions? Felipe, Felipe, this is Edward Bartholomew. Uh, Bartholomew Hi, Edward. Lighting. How you doing? Good. I, I wanted to see if you if the ILC will be providing additional trainings or webinars regarding advances in technology, looking at interoperability between, you know, what are the preferred platforms? Is it Bluetooth? Is it, you know, what are the, the standards that are being developed? Um, will that be uh, further development? There, there, there is research that has been going on at Pacific Northwest National Lab regarding interoperability. Um, we can certainly look at that as as the need arises. Uh, also, you know, this being our first year, I think we will take all those projects that are submitted, understand what some of those challenges were, and then tailor that educational aspect of it from the campaign and and our resource development based on what we're hearing. Right. So we're asking for the good. We're also asking for the bad. Uh, there's a lot to learn from the challenges in these installations right or or the operation of these systems uh, so i think we will do that uh edward based based on what we hear this first year of the campaign and develop those resources accordingly great i have a quick follow-up regarding sure. um how spaces are utilizing uh, the controls and hvac interop, uh, interaction for covid okay. and making these spaces um responsive or, or being able to track um people within the space things like that any mm -hmm. Will there be any development regarding that, and especially UV, uh, GUV applications? There, there was a webinar uh, that was held by the Lighting and Electrical uh, Technology Research Team. It's another aspect of better buildings. Uh, there, there was a lot of information covered about uh, GUV, um, and I'm not sure if you were asking also about uh, the contact tracing, which I know that some of the lighting yeah. systems are starting to have. 
yeah, uh, that is something that is is definitely on our radar screen in in terms of we would love to hear about these systems uh, we want to know how it's going for for those that have adopted these uh, and absolutely part of the part of uh, the campaign and, and its goals yeah and i think following up and figuring out non-energy related benefits yep. would be huge to document yep. that uh, the utilities yep. look for that as well so for yep. developing ecms yeah yep and energy benefits, of course, is is important to us, but it is it is not the only thing we're looking for in in this campaign. While the while the previous campaign did focus on that, you know, how much did control savings, how much was control savings, how much was lighting energy savings, uh, we we recognize that it is these advanced capabilities and these systems, the non-energy benefits at times, that are really going to help sell these high efficiency systems or, or just make that transition from hopefully if you still have a fluorescent luminaire you'll start realizing there are a lot of more things that that these lighting systems can do uh, as, as you integrate them into a building so we are absolutely wanting to one hear about them and, and document them but two also get to quantifying because that is where there seems to be a lack of information is how much am i going to gain from having non-energy benefits right what what is my opportunity here where we can start putting some bounds around hey this, this might have this much impact on your uh, productivity, or this might have this much impact on your um, uh, building costs, right? Uh, if, if, for example, the lighting system helps you understand what, what uh, offices were not occupied for the past week, uh, will that help your, your building be more efficiently maintained by, by your maintenance staff? Uh, and, and leading to other costs, or at least other opportunities to focus on other areas that, that the building might need. Uh, so those are things that that are really enabled, uh, and, and they need to be quantified so that they can become more more effective. So we we hope to do that, Edward, and we hope that if you've heard of these systems, uh, please send them our way. Great. Anything else from uh, webinar participants? I will have one last poll question once once it gets really quiet, but I, I still want to give an opportunity for for exchange. And here, here on the screen, I, I did put some of the things that you heard about today, recognition, resources, participants, supporters, projects. Uh, these are just some of the key words that you might have heard me say over and over again. Um, so hopefully it, it rings a bell and, and reminds you of something you might have wanted to get more information about. All right. We are at about seven minutes left on the webinar. Uh, so I think I will go to the next slide, which is a poll. Nina? Uh, so before you go, we'd like to understand how you would prefer to communicate about the ILC to potential participants. So here, here are some of the resources that the ILC may be able to provide in order to help. And we'd like to understand what you feel um, might be most impactful in, in reaching out to someone and saying, hey, I heard about the inter integrated lighting campaign. You should consider joining it. Is, is it one of these that are on here? And, and for the purpose of this, which one is the one that you think would be most impactful to somebody that's just hearing about this? Let's go ahead and take a moment to answer that. Great, thank you, Nina. All right, so let's take a look at the responses here. Um, I think either a, a one-page or a two-page summary document uh, seem to be favored here. Uh, many of you, uh, through this webinar, you, you've heard enough. You know where the website is. Uh, you plan to share that far and wide, uh, and we do appreciate that. Um, and lastly, uh, as as supporter, you know we'd love we'd love to have a conversation with you. Uh, so next slide, please. My my con uh, my contact information is right here. Uh, you've got my email. You've got my phone number. Uh, we also have a campaign email here, integratedlighting at pnnl.gov. Uh, please take a moment to send me an email with any additional questions you have, any suggestions, um, or if you'd just like to discuss some of the projects that you've been involved with and and what you feel the campaign should should be doing to to help those projects. Uh, you know, deal with interoperability issues or deal with um, operational challenges that, that facility managers are dealing with. Uh, so always here to hear from you um, and, and set up a call and, and have a discussion around that. 
So with this, uh, I'd like to thank you for attending uh, the webinar today. And uh, again, feel free to go to our website uh, and we'll provide the presentation as well as a recording of this presentation on our website when it becomes available. So have a great day, everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar and stay healthy and safe.